Let's start out our, our interview today speaking with Dr. Matthew Kaledi. Dr. Kaledi is a professor of surgery and the chief of colorectal surgery at The Ohio State University. Dr. Kaledi, could you start out please by telling us what are your thoughts on the colon cancer screening options that were presented? So thanks, Dean. Thanks for uh, welcoming me here. Um, the, all the speakers did a great job, and I think it's a very informative session. Um, the bottom line is that there are a couple different options. The most, um, or the most common is the gold standard colonoscopy. And then there's also FIT tests, where it's looking for um, fecal occult blood um, on, on immunohistochemistry. And then there's also the FIT tests that look at for occult blood as well as DNA testing. All of those have the different strengths and weaknesses and all those are feasible options. The most important thing to note is that the best test is the test that gets done. And all of them have different strengths and weaknesses, but as long as someone's getting screened, that's the most important part. As we do know that colonoscopy does in fact, or screening in fact, saves lives, but way too few people in America are getting screened. Uh, less than half of people who should be getting screened are getting screened. So any way that people get tested is a good way. What types of colon cancer screening practices do you recommend for both average and high-risk patients and why? So I think it's an important distinction as you made between average risk and high risk. So looking at average risk, it means there's no family history, no known hereditary syndromes or no inflammatory bowel disease, anything else that puts them there. So these are people without symptoms. Those people at age 50 should get the first screening test. And in my practice, I generally recommend colonoscopy as that's still the gold standard. It has the highest uh, detection rate and also you can intervene at the same time. There are some other recommendations now looking at age 45 for average risk patients, uh, particularly 45 across the board for African Americans, but then non-African Americans also at age 45, both the American Cancer Society and the American Society of Colorectal Surgeons both recommend screening at age 45 based on um, different evidence and statistical models. There is some debate about that, but I think in my mind at least screening um, a little earlier is better to try to avoid missing cancers. For the high-risk patients, as I said, those are people who have a family history, uh, in particular patients who have a first-degree relative um, at, less, at uh, less than age 60. Those people get screened at age 40 uh, and then get screened every five years as opposed to every 10 in average risk individuals without findings. Uh, and then people who have uh, greater than age 60 and multiple first-degree relatives or any second-degree relative um, that have either high-risk adenomas or cancers, they also get screened at age 40 and at five-year intervals, depending on what the findings are. What do you think contributes to the statistic that two-thirds of all colon cancer cases are noted in developed countries? That's a, a great kind of thought and, and philosophical question, but I think a lot of the things, so there's genetic components to developing colorectal cancer, and then there's environmental components to it. And I think a lot of this is probably the environmental side. So it's, it's lifestyle, it's diet, it's lack of exercise, uh, things that are often seen in some of the uh, more developed countries. So I think all those things are contributing. So whether screening colonoscopy uh, is performed with some of these new artificial intelligence innovations, or perhaps even if it's uh, the FIT, whichever methodology is employed, and as you say, the important thing is that the patient gets screened, at what age should that screening begin? Uh, how aggressively should we be screening people? Uh, in particular, people come, you know, they're 45 years old, maybe a little bit of bleeding, it's ascribed to hemorrhoids. So at what age should we start screening uh, based on complete lack of symptoms versus some symptoms that potentially could be attributable to colorectal inflammation? At the other end of the spectrum, is there an age at which we should stop screening? So those are all great questions. I think the first distinction is screening from non-screening. So if somebody has bleeding, um, that's not considered screening anymore, and those people should get evaluated. Uh, if you're able to evaluate somebody in the office and it's a clear source of bleeding, such as a hemorrhoid or a fissure or a tear, then that's okay. But if there's not an obvious source, even someone in their 30s should probably evaluate a colonoscopy because we're seeing the rates of colon rectal cancer in young patients go dramatically up over the last 20 years, and that's continuing to rise. So I think evaluation of symptoms early, no matter what the age, is really important. For people who are completely asymptomatic, it depends on the guidelines and who you're talking to, but it's somewhere between 45 and 50. Again, for African-Americans, it's 45. For non-African-Americans, it's 50. 
the American Cancer Society and American Society of Colorectal Surgeons do say now at age 45, consideration of screening for asymptomatic adults also. If those findings are completely normal, you can repeat them in 10 years. On the other extreme of that, say, when do you stop screening? And again, the thing about the whole goal of this is, can you detect pre-malignant lesions or cancer early stage so that you're either preventing cancer or preventing death from cancer? Then they have to think about what's the risk of doing the test and the cost of the test with what the benefit's going to be. So you think about what's the end of life gonna look like. So obviously if someone's 95 and is not very healthy, probably has a life expectancy in a few years, those people shouldn't be getting routinely screened. The average age or what, what people, for most guys, let's say 75. So the screening is basically from 50 to 75, but at 75 you stop with the caveat of personalized thinking about things from an individual standpoint. So if someone's very healthy and they're clearly still at, at that point, think that they'll be fine and alive and healthy at 85, well then screen them again at 85, or if they got a screen at 65 and 75, whatever it is, it's not a straight hard cutoff. Um, there are some data that say 85 is kind of the absolute cut, but again, everything's individualized. But if you're looking just at straight numbers, 75 would be the one you stop. 